And by the way, I should I should uh, give you a big thank you for connecting me with uh, Bell Campo Farms. Uh, they sent me some meat, I think, because of you, <laughs> and it's delicious. So I I, I really I really appreciate that. I mean, it also connected me with this whole world of people who are doing farming in this ethical way and like really love the whole process and like and as uh, from a both like a human level but also scientific level and the result is um, it's like ethical, but also is delicious. And it makes you think about your diet in a whole new kind of way. Yeah, I've known, um, I don't have any commercial relationship to Belcampo, so I can be very clear. I've known Anya Fernald, who, who's the, one of the, found, is the founder and CEO of Belcampo. I've known her since the ninth grade. It, it is true that her parents are faculty members at Stanford, they're colleagues of mine, but she's just a serious academic of nutrition, but also of sustainable agriculture, of you know, all sorts of things. And also the meat just, it's awesome. It tastes really good. And no, I'm not getting paid to say that. And no, they're not a sponsoring my podcast. It's just, if you, I feel like if you're going to eat animals, if that's in your framework and you're going to eat animals, knowing that the animals were raised as happy as could be until, you know, time of slaughter is, is at least important to me. And, and I actually uh, talked to her. So I, I will talk to her on this podcast actually. And she invited me uh, like a week ago out to to visit the farm in May or June or whatever. Oh, yeah, they have the farm up at the Oregon border. I haven't yeah. been there yet, but I've seen the pictures. And it's it just looks beautiful. awesome. And I was like, yeah. yes. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Let me know when you're going. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. go together. I mean, this yeah. is, it's, You'll yeah. probably run there, but I'll drive there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that all that said, I do want to, because a lot of people who are vegan write to me, and I do want to seriously, in the same seriousness that I approached keto, I do want to go like on a few months to, to switch to a vegan diet at some point to really try it. Yeah, I haven't and, done it yet because I'm afraid I'm going to function better. <laughs> my, I'm Argentine by my dad's side, and I I yeah. I don't eat I don't eat meat super often, but I, well, for most people it would it would seem often, but um, but I I do love steak i do um so i'm afraid i'm gonna feel better there's a social element to steak you're right because coming from a russian background like i can't imagine going to visit my folks uh like my parents for thanksgiving or something and say mom and dad i'm uh you know i, I don't eat meat so is it you know well i think if you're gonna eat meat getting it from sources that are compatible with um a, you know continuation of the planet is good i mean there are some some real problems with the factory farm meat, you know, you drive up and down the five and you pass that point where there are all those cows. I mean, as somebody who loves animals, um, it's, it's clear that it's, you know, you want to limit the amount of suffering of those animals. Whenever I hear about, um, you know, we have, we know people that hunt and that go and get their own meat. I, I really admire that. I admire that people yeah. do that. Uh, we don't, we don't tend to do that in the hills around Stanford, you know, there are mountain lions back there, but that's about it. And I'm, I'm certainly, I, I admire the vegan mindset of being, of just making that decision. You're just not going to consume other beings, but you know, I haven't gone that way. But performance wise, I'm just curious because I was surprised I was certain that eating five, six, seven meals a day is the right thing to do for all, if you want to be perform your best when I was like 20 or whatever. And I would eat oatmeal. Like I thought it's obvious I have to have a really, a lot of carbs in the breakfast. I had a lot of preconceived notions. And then when I started eating like once a day, this was at the peak of my competing in jujitsu. It, it was like, everything I know about nutrition is wrong. Yeah. You realize that like you have to become a scientist. First of all, you have to read literature, you have to learn, you have to experiment, but you also have to become a scientist of your own body. And in the same way, I have a lot of preconceived notions of what performance is like under vegan diet. And I want to do it right, like seriously, not, not necessarily for the ethical reasons, but to see if it's performance wise. Like, can I, I, I remember there's like a fruitarian diet where you eat fruit only. You know, These extremes are like, they're pretty, they're interesting because people have this need. The extremes are informative though, right? I mean, right. well-controlled experiments, you eliminate as many variables as you can, except the one you're interested in. So right. people are running these experiments. I, I think that it's hard to imagine getting, I know people say you can get enough amino acids from plant-based sources. And I believe that. I think it probably takes a little more work 
Um, it, one thing that's really clear is that the benefit of these um, omega-3, omega-6 ratios, like fish oils and things like that. There are some data that show that the getting at least a thousand milligrams of the EPA, which is in high in fish oils, but other things too, even some meats and other plants, it in double, it, you know, in matched uh, placebo double blind controlled studies, placebo controlled double blind studies have shown that those can offset antidepressive symptoms as much as some of the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Prolac and uh, Prozac and Zoloft. So that's pretty impressive. And in Scandinavia, people know, especially in winter, to, to consume a lot of those omega threes because they're good for you. They're good for the brain. That's the other question. Um, nutrition wise, what, what kind of stuff have you come across that's useful? Like I basically only take fish oil, like you said, electrolytes. So electrolytes with water, the David Goggins mm -hmm. diet. Fish oil. Plus fish oil. And then uh, again, the sponsor, I, they made it so easier. The, the sponsor of your podcast and, and mine, athleticgreens.com yeah. slash Huberman. Great Go stuff. Support yeah. it. I don't, I don't know, like it's, it's great stuff for sure but also just takes away the headache of like, I don't have to think about. Like, yeah, you're gonna get a bunch of vitamins and minerals. It does that, it sounds like a, a plug, but I have genuinely been buying it on yeah. my, you know, yeah. no discount, no affiliation or anything since 2012. I think I heard about it on the Tim Ferriss podcast. I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that stuff. And I liked it. I mean, when I was starting my lab, I was working insane hours. I still work very long hours and getting sick limits productivity. And I also wanted to train and I wasn't doing much training back then. Um, now I try and get, you know, three, four sessions in a week. I'm not doing nothing like what you and David are doing or what, you know, Joe does, or like you guys are way more regimented and consistent than I am. Um, but I think that being healthy and feeling good is one of the great benefits to a career is having energy and just being not sick. 